Homemade guacamole is a classic. The key is to have all the proportions just right so that all of the textures and the flavors really pop. That is so good. Okay, so quick story. Yesterday was my anniversary. My husband and I had been married for 15 years. We have two beautiful children and it all began in a Mexican restaurant. I was over 20 years ago, we were both waiting tables at the same restaurant, and needless to say, we take our guacamole very seriously. So I'm gonna share all of my best tips and tricks, what I do and why, so that you can rest assured that you are gonna learn how to make the best guacamole. So a very important component of making sure you have amazingly delicious guacamole is a perfectly ripe avocado. So what I like to do is use the press test. All you do is you hold your avocado up and gently press your thumb into the skin of the avocado. What I'm looking for is just a nice light indentation. So the avocado has a little bit of give when you press on it. If there's no give at all, chances are it's too hard and it's not ripe enough. And if it's too soft and your thumb mushes right in, then you may have an avocado that's overripe. Slice the avocado in half, and then I just gently tap my knife right into the pit to pull it out. Now, if that technique makes you a little bit nervous, what you can also do is just gently squish the sides of the avocado, and if the avocado is nice and ripe, the pit will pop right out, just like this, and then I just pull it out with my fingers. I'm gonna scoop the avocado out of the skins and get it into my bowl, and then top that with the juice from half of a super juicy lime. And then using the backside of my fork, I'm just gonna gently mash the avocado along the sides of the bowl until it's nice and creamy. Now, just a side note, this recipe serves anywhere between two and four people, depending on how you're using it, but it can easily be scaled up or down. Then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup each of a finely diced onion and some diced tomato. Now for my onion, I like to use a white onion because it has a nice mild flavor and it adds a great texture without being overpowering. If you wanted something even more mild, you could swap the onions in for some sliced scallions. Now for the tomato, I recommend choosing the most beautiful in-season ripe tomato that you can get your hands on. And first what I like to do is remove the seeds. This way we don't get um, the wet seeds in the guacamole to water it down and then chop it up. Next up, we have our garlic. Now you could do one to two cloves of garlic depending on how much you enjoy garlic, but definitely you wanna use a garlic press. This gets all the juices and the flavors from the garlic and it ensures that nobody eating your guacamole is gonna get a big hunk of garlic in their mouth. Then I'm adding in a couple tablespoons of chopped fresh cilantro. Now, whenever you're chopping your cilantro, you wanna cut off the big thick stems towards the end, but the thinner ones towards the top are perfectly fine. And then I've got just a little bit of chopped up green bell pepper. Now, traditionally I would do jalapeno pepper, but because I don't want the guacamole to be spicy because I want to keep it family friendly, AKA I want my kids to eat it, I find that swapping in some green bell pepper works brilliantly. This way we still get the great crunchy texture with the pepper flavor, but we don't have any of the heat. And then I'll just finish that with a heaping quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and gently start to mix this all together. Now the reason I really like kosher salt is because it has larger crystals of salt than table salt and actually contains fewer salt crystals by volume, which means you're using less salt overall and getting a bit of a crunchy texture from the salt. Once I've got everything mixed together, I'm just gonna transfer this into my serving bowl and this guacamole is ready to go. Now the obvious choice is to serve the guacamole with some corn chips, so simple, so delicious, such a classic, and you can bring it along almost anywhere for any occasion. But other things I really like to enjoy the guacamole with are tacos and chili. Some of my favorites are to serve this guacamole with my turkey and black bean tacos or with my shrimp tacos. And if I'm doing a chili, I love it on top mm. of a veggie chili or even a classic chili con carne. I hope you all enjoyed this recipe and this video. If you did, please take a moment to give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So good. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I'll see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers. Now, if you're wondering why I... <clears throat> Now if you're wondering why I Now if you're wondering why I usually opt <clears throat> Now if you're wondering why I usually use Are we having fun we are <laughs>